Institute. So, I mean, today I'm presenting a version, I mean, still <clears throat> something that is very kind of work in progress. And it's basically um, a sort of assessment of, you know, the, well, more like the effect on the, you know, the, um, like a, a policy shock on uh, keeping interest rate high in a, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a small open economy using the uh, stock flow model that he had been sort of developing in this, uh, oh, thank you, in this, um, this year with uh, this bunch of authors, uh, Lorenzo Nalin, Leonardo Rojas, and Esteban Perez Caldente. And um, so the idea and kind of also thinking on how, you know, how those, um, so also trying to bind, sort of try to also uh, combine the 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 the, the, sort of the literature on the on the you know the passing eighty index. So I'll try to all those you know sort of the um, sort of the passing eighty the case of Latin America may fit may be fit or not within this you know within this framework. So um, and in fact, basically, this is pretty much the plan of my or uh, plan of my talk. So first, well, first of all, again, we are using a, a, a model that we actually develop to more assess more like uh, ecological sort of uh, ecological policy, environmental transition policy. Although, I mean, this, this model that, you know, this model is really sort of a, or sort of a macro model. So it's also fits quite well in, and then I'll show you why, uh, to sort of uh, assess the effect of high interest rate in, uh, in, uh, in small open, Financialize also. I should have. I should have economies. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it, basically. So that will be. So that will be the plan of my talk. So I mean, I'm gonna show you first some of the stylized start relating related to you know to development of a facility index, in particular how and uh, how this actually there is this huge divergence as I will show you in a moment with respect the you know the so-called Pasinetti index. Uh, for the center, so the global center, which would be here, the US, and how you know this dynamic differs from the one of you know of more let's say peripheral economies such as the Latin American one, and then I'm going to go to you know to the 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 mode the 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 model settings and show you sort of the result of you know the very preliminary result we had with this you know uh, with this uh, with uh, with our framework. So so first of all, I mean. Uh, some word of caution. I mean, this is something that I've basically I've been working, you know, it's not uh, still open to sort of, again, um, to um, to uh, improvement. But so what we did is first, uh, we sort of try to estimate, uh, again, we didn't, I mean, and this is perhaps another limitation of our model. I mean, we, in terms of, most in terms of that, uh, that uh, of, of, um, of, of data, because we sort of estimated, we were, I mean, at least uh, uh, we were first able to have like an idea of how the Spassinetti Index has been developing in the last sort of uh, 10 years or you know, a little bit more than 10 years. And try to compare it with the more sort of uh, the, uh, to the, 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 the same index for the US. Um, another word of caution is that, so this was, I mean, I was in this case able to compute the sort of the, the Passinetti Index using not the sort of the standard sort of long-term sort of interest rate of the 10 years, you know, the treasury um, yield, but using the more standard sort of policy rate, um, which is not obviously correct following you know, the literature, but still, so the idea kind of shows you, you know, first of all, the, uh, at first glance, the huge diversion that, you know, that there is this between the computation of you know the passivity index for the sort of the global sector and you know for the for the, for the, the the Latin American region. Again, this is also, this is also not like the entire average for you know the the, the entire uh, Latin American Caribbean region, just for the sort of the six or seven bigger economies. Um, and you can see there is this huge divergence uh, going on, and uh, especially after the the, the 2016. So um, when there was starting to you know, see some, you know, the, especially driven by the really differential between the, you know, the monetary policy interest rates. Um, if we were perhaps to compute the same index using like a proper methodology, theoretical, like let's see the, you know, the equivalent 10 years 
whatever uh, uh, yields on the you know the treasury of each you know, the average treasury of so for each uh, Latin American country. Perhaps you, you may have seen even a bigger difference. So you can see here that there is actually kind of a you know kind of a period in which this this value falls you know around zero. Although if I mean I, I, this is something that I was able to do it this morning, and um, I can I couldn't I think. I even included here. Uh, yes. So I mean, basically, I re-estimated the facility index using the um, sort of the correction that you know was suggested by Mark and uh, Mario in the Bope 2019 paper. That is adding the rate of growth of well, subtracting the rate of growth of you know the profit, the profit share. Well, actually, there are two versions of it. So the first one will be, you know, with the uh, the 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 um, the group simply simply subtracting to the Pasinetti index the standard Pasinetti index, so using labor productivity, so not using the uh, the growth rate of wages. So subtracting the sort of the, uh, the the rate of growth of the profit share, and then adding this, you know, the term the, the, which is basically the weight. Yeah. So the weight share divided by the profit share. But I mean, the differential is very small. But still, what you can see here, at least for the Latin, the case of Latin America, is that actually this small period in which you will see that it will sort of, uh, you know, falls up and down below the below and above the zero line, it is consistently above zero. So again, take it with a sort of a a, a, a little bit of a grain of a uh, you know. So where it is like it's again, it's like a simple average of you know, of uh, of uh, the most representative sort of countries of Latin America, but still show you how I mean there was this I mean there is there was like originally like a premium and it shows you the, the the size of a premium and how this sort of premium over you know over the sort of the sort of the uh, the, the the benchmark international interest rate has been increasing especially after the yeah two thousand the mid the, the mid two thousand tens. And that, and how he hasn't gone, gone down this. Um, um, yeah, of course. I mean, I even thought whether it would make sense to compute kind of a relative sort of passing AT index. But by relative, I mean simply you know taking the difference between sort of the global financial center passing AT index and uh, you know, the, the one for US basically. And with respect and contrasting the evolution with respect to uh, you know, uh, the uh, uh, the pass the you know the facility in, different, in this case for Latin America countries. But of course, since you know this index is roughly among zero in this period, of course, the difference is, is very small. So what I mean, what what are the drivers of of sorry? Um, so done a little bit, yeah. Okay, so using the wrong. Uh, so what are the drivers of this, you know, that is, could sort of explain this impressive divergence? Uh, I mean, I've, there are several drivers, actually. But, you know, there are a couple of sort of stylized slides that could somehow help to shed some light on this divergence. So the first sort of stylized fact then is that, you know, over this period of the, you know, early, the last decade, basically, so the short, there has been a massive increase of short-term sort of uh, financial flows. Um, and not just short-term flows in terms of the standard sort of portfolio flows, which by definition should be kind of, uh, you know, kind of more volatile and more speculative in their nature. But you also have an increase on the foreign debt instruments as a share of FD, total FDI. Um, those, those debt instruments uh, are basically, most of the time, intercompany loans. So intercompany loans are, you know, a component of the direct investment. And usually, you know, direct investment, you know, you have this categorization. You will even find it in the uh, sort of IMF sort of data that, you know, basically you have sort of the, the, the distinction between direct sort of long-term kind of foreign uh, direct uh, sort of foreign investment, and then the more portfolio sort of short-run, more speculative sort of investment. And then, you know, you can even sort of correct sort of the main balance 
and adding sort of the foreign direct investment to say, oh, this is the real sort of way to measure the constraint of a country. So some of the IMF actually, you know, have done some this, you know, estimate this sort of corrected main balance to see, well, I mean, if you have some foreign direct investment, this will sort of relieve the external constraint of a country. Well, it turns out that, you know, at least for the cases of, you know, Mexico and Brazil, for instance, uh, pointing Mexico and Brazil <laughs> you know, right in front of me. So these actually have been behaving quite, uh, you know, quite similar. Their behavior has been quite similar to the one of the short-term portfolio ones. And why so? Because this has been following, I mean, again, I, I, would, I should point out that this scheme, that this sort of, uh, you know, uh, sort of, uh, uh, yeah, so this is uh, this figure has not developed. I mean, I'm not too, I'm not, I'm not that smart to develop this figure. I mean, it was in you know, digging up from a previous work of Esteban Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the idea, the idea will be pretty similar, actually, pretty, pretty, pretty simple. I mean, so the idea was taking, you know, taking, uh, um, um, exploiting differential between sort of the interest rate in, uh, you know, and uh, the. Um, the negative differential, in, uh, well, the positive differential in this case between you know the 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 the, the interest rate in the in the in the in the you know the local small open economy with respect the you know the the, the benchmark interest rate which was close to zero. Uh, so you know um, uh, so uh, companies from say Brazil or Mexico, let's say just continue to use these cases. Would have you know had issued had been issuing you know debt in the, those uh, you know international uh, international markets, and sort of using you know the proceeding of this debt to basically to lend out those uh, you know those uh, low denominators in dollars to their to you know the to uh, to other companies in their countries. So this, from the account this accounting perspective, would have count as a sort of a direct investment. Uh, so a component of that. So we'll see this will, will effectively call that sort of not just as a sort of a financial inflows, but sort of the good type of financial inflow. That is, yes, I mean it's good. everything is going fine if we took, you know, we take, you know, sort of the measure of you know foreign direct investment. Although this is really, you know, this is really related to the behavior of the so far the, the sort of the global international liquidity side. Uh, so this is one of the side effects. So the other one perhaps is more like a you know, recognition or acknowledgement that sort of the exchange, the nominal exchange rates sort of variation in those countries are, are significantly correlated with the sovereign risk perception. And, uh, you know, the most, use, the most sort of use indicators index actually um, to sort of wage or to measure this sort of volatility is this uh, emerging, uh, emerging market, market bond index. Um, and you and you see basically that you know the sort of the behavior of the currency for all these countries pretty 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 much follows you know the behavior of the sort of the valuation of the risk perception of you know, foreign investors. Um, and then another you know sort of stylized fact is that you know those internal sort of internal financial condition has sort of been adjusting, and this is especially you know I mean the aftermath of the COVID crisis. To the external financial ones, so I mean, again, is it sort of uh, is it? It's usually it is said that if you sort of borrow in your domestic currency, I mean, you can sort of sort of you are more you're less sort of uh, your your uh, sort of your your risk will lower because you know you can always you have to issue debt to repay your repay your your standing debt. But well, it turns out that actually even this sort of you know condition in the mind against in the mind of you know foreign investors are really related to the external ones. So in a way, yes, you can still maintain sort of sort of this you can still say oh, and it still goes through the fact that you know you sort of you can sort of repay your debt in if it's issuing your domestic currency. But you know the side you know the, the sort of the you know, sort of the um, effort that you have to sort of uh, you have you have to you have to put it will be will be much higher and will be sort of driven by again by sort of external conditions. Um, so all I mean, given all sort of these um, 
I'm again, so I mean, moving uh, a little bit uh, further. Um, so we, so having in mind those, you know, those uh, sort of those these highlights fact, we sort of, well, we took our model that I will sort of show you in in a in a moment, um, in which basically sort of we have like a standard sort of open stock flow sort of models, in which we introduce it basically mm, mm, so more way more sort of asset in term, and then we sort of focus more on the sort of the 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 different uh, denomination of you know of assets and most importantly liabilities so we have a bunch of you know bunch of the, most of the standard sort of the asset we you know you could you can find in sort of a stock sort of stock flow model so that we duplicate it having you know having the corresponding and issued in a sort of a, in the in a foreign currency um and uh, yeah, I know it's not visible here because I mean this is a sort of a uh, it's a previous version of you know the, the transaction flow matrix. We uh, we had we we originally had in our model the you know a single sort of household. Uh, well, we didn't have sort of classes in this. Set. And then in this sort of in this version of the model, we introduced the sort of variation between sort of workers, or wage earners, and profit earners. So, um, which will both receive, you know, in this case, sort of, you know, uh, sort of uh, the, the proceeding, you know, sort of the profits from the sort of the firms and also from the part sort of the financial sector. Um, and also to give you a little bit of uh, context, I mean, usually, you know, in this the tradition of the SFC model, in you know, especially the open economy ones. Um, whenever you sort of introduce the exchange rate part, and uh, it's Basically, it will be will be your sort of the last block that you sort of explain and introduce, and it's it's the way for you to sort of uh, close the model. So it will be your accounting closure. So in basically in our model, so we use instead we sort of take a different approach and you know try to sort of follow those stylized part. We make sure that basically these are the one that sort of kind of leads the entire mechanism of sort of the model. So we do have, you know, we do have forced, uh, you know, sort of uh, endogenous mechanisms to deter determine those uh, sort of uh, sort of the, those uh, those uh, you know those uh, uh, those premium the those premium both at the sort of the government sector and at the, the sort of the corporate mm -hmm. sector. So which will be a function of you know for a, basically uh, indebtedness for a debt indebtedness. Or you know, several measure of this, of this too, both in terms of flows and in terms of stocks, um, and you know, sort of these two index basically move helps to shape the dynamic of the exchange rate over time, basically, which is also affected by sort of the expectation of agents, kind of in a sort of Lavoie and Daigle fashion. Um, and the domestic interest rate will depend on sort of the international, well, I mean, not surprisingly, on the international rate and uh, sort of this, uh, the, uh, the emerging market, well, the sort of the emerging market uh, uh, index uh, for, um, for government, uh, government bonds. So, of course, we have, you know, separation between classes. Um, and so, and then there are other interesting mechanism that, you know, we do have the sort of, uh, um, the sort of confidence index of, you know, private investment, which, you know, it's basically, you know, sort of basically shaped future expectation. Uh, so no, basically, you know, shape you know, the, the investment flow. And then it's shaped by, you know, basically future, you know, for expectation of, you know, uh, future returns. And, uh, you know, the, and also it's driven by the growth, the, you know, an exogenous component with this, the growth rate of, uh, you know, the, of, well, both domestic, but, you know, and also foreign, you know, the foreign sector um yeah and of course i mean this the profit expectation will be also sort of a function of more let's say sort of uh, sort of a more sort of tra traditional standard indicator with the, is the roi and uh, well or our you know roi in in our in, in our model which is precisely the roi but anyway. and uh, again the corporate risk premium um 
so I mean, so government, uh, so government expenditure kind of, you know, uh, kind of follows the, you know, the the uh, the the way to go to GDP. So there is like a fixed sort of uh, expenditure rule, um, and a fraction of debt is issued in foreign currency. Um, and how actually, you know, the the central bank behaves in you know setting in setting interest rate. So I mean, the the central bank will demand domestic bonds according to a, sort of a target ledger, which will depend sort of the behavior of the credit market and the exchange rate. And so those I sort of ideal amounts of bonds the the central bank will uh, will be willing to hold will depend on you know sort of a standard version of the Taylor rule and the absurd volatility in the exchange rate. Um, yeah, the great tier will low. Yeah, well, I mean, great tier will, I should say. <laughs> uh, although this is, you know, of course, it will govern the sort of the relationship, the, the trade uh, with the rest of the world. Even though this is a slight uh, different version, which is augmented with the sort of the trade, with the terms of trade. And, and I'm going to tell, uh, tell you something on the terms of trade um, later on. How much time do I have? Um, uh, 50 minutes. 15 or one minute? 15. Oh, 15. Okay. Somebody said one minute. <laughs> oh, it was you. <laughs> now you have 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah, well, cool. uh, I have to rush this. Uh, well, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's, you know, after. Uh, well, anyway, so, um, yeah, again, so the, the demand of the, uh, um, the, the rest of the world for the government bond issue in local currency will depend on global GDP growth, interest rate spreads, and exchange rate expectation. Um, whereas the government for the, the demand for government bonds issued in foreign currency will be determined by simply by interest rate differentials. Um, well, this is the eco ecological part, which uh, I can simply skip it. Uh, although here, I mean, yeah, a uh, uh, little bit more. Uh, but I mean, appropriate at this time because I can jump directly to the sort of the, the baseline result. I mean, this is a simple, you know, to show you that, I mean, we are kind of managing to capture some of this with some autocorrelation analysis, kind of capture the behavior of some of the flows like investment. Uh, uh, what is, oh, this is actually the, the, the dynamic of, you know, the, uh, the foreign and foreign and uh, total foreign and uh, local debt. And, nominal exchange rate and nominal interest rate sort of out of correlation and uh, you know, investment and other component of uh, you know uh, aggregate demand so we have the simple sort of scenario in which you know sort of there is an increase or you know the benchmark sort of interest rate again because you know in our model this is really endogenous so of course i mean what you get with respect sort of the baseline uh, sort of uh, sort of the baseline scenario is you know, get Obviously, you get higher interest rate by the thing. You would raise the premium, of course, to get this. And of course, you get you know higher debt both you know for you know the local, the total, the local, and sort of the foreign sort of uh, And of course, you also have an increase in service of debt. Um, but you have a, a depreciation because of the mechanism that I sort of introduced you. Um, uh, depreciation of the exchange. Because again, it's driven by you know, so higher volatility and higher sort of uh, co both corporate and most importantly, um, um, you know, government or you know, or government uh, risk premium. Uh, and of course, here, here we computed our simply our Pacinetti index. You can we can compute the Pacinetti index in our model because we have a you know a, although a, a very simple you know function for both the to endogenize both the productivity and the sort of uh, the, the the dynamic of prices uh yeah so you said you increase the interest rate and then you get a depreciation yes <laughs> what's the mechanism it's related to the to the to the to those corporate risk premium so basically you know basically the idea is that you are you know basically the the, the foreign investor will perceive that you know currency is uh, less uh, i mean in you know psychologically will uh, perceive that you know you you lose they will lose confidence in the you know in the in, in the in the currency and then they will you know follow you know it will uh will fly from from the from from the country basically so will both will this will will be a boost uh a boost for capital flights basically although still having although maintaining a positive sort of interest premium so it's puzzling but 
we believe that this captures some of this. I mean, puzzling from sort of a standard sort of uh, idea that you know you raise you raise interest rate and you have capital flows. I mean, it's true, but you know when we have this pressure, especially when this this the sort of psychological pressure, which is you know really driven by sort of the risk, sort of increasing, but really raising your risk premium. I mean, this is not enough for you to you know to force this you know. Well, those uh, those capital flows to return in your home country. So yes, from a standard macro sort of international macro perspective, it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty pretty puzzling. But you know because you have to take into account this uh, this additional sort of mechanism. Uh, yeah, and so you get also a higher fascinating index, um, lower wage share. Interesting result. Well, I mean interesting result. Lower trade balance, uh, although uh, sort of a higher sort of profit sale ratio, which uh, in a way helps to sort of boost uh, a little bit uh, the GDP growth uh, slightly above sort of the baseline scenario. So, I mean, this model really displays some sort of a la blacker profit uh, sort of profit led mechanism. So, these are extreme and perhaps um, in a way, perhaps should could, could be edited. But yeah, so this is where some of our sort of results from from uh, from our preliminary simulation. Um, I think that is something missing, but yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, because it was supposed to be, you know, the enclosing gray boxes, but I don't know why. I mean, it's displaying correctly in here, but here not. But anyway, so I mean, my point is, I mean, try to recap everything. So. Of course, you know, Latin American countries does do suffer from external financial constraints, and uh, you know, of course, obviously, when you have an increase in interest rate, you have a reduced economic policy space, and of course, this has terrible consequences. Will have could have terrible consequences, especially you know, if you have to finance sort of long term measure related to the ecological sort of transition or any structural sort of uh, sort of uh, measures. And uh, of course, we have an increase in income inequalities, which of course comes with a multiple channels because you know you also have you know higher interest rate. So this also also you know sort of uh, sort of finance you know the profit share basically. So this also helps to sort of boost the profit share against sort of the wage share. Um, yeah, and so of course you know whatever you over I and mean, if you continue to take sort of the uh, the, the case of uh, long term you know ecological sort of uh, also sort of measures um so whatever adaptation and mitigation policy could be fiscal challenging if sort of those financial instruments do not evolve to take into account this sort of feedback um um and then of course i mean the model is pretty simple so it's open to you know it's open to improvement Especially, you know, some of the some of the some of the areas, um, um, yeah. So, no, I'm I'm not gonna go to the appendix. Although, I mean, there was something interesting. I mean, I think I I'm, I'm just gonna mention. I mean, do I have still time or yeah, not, a little bit? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. What's yeah? I mean, it is, yeah, it's, yeah. 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 I mean, well, whatever. So um, what I wanted to show you, and then actually this is something that I have to edit from uh, the sort of um, the blog that is coming out from you know uh, Louis uh, Philippe um, uh, website. Uh, it's something that you know I, I want. I also I also included in this presentation. Um, so you know basically you know you should have you know following the idea of sort of the increase of standard idea of you know increasing interest rate in the case of the fascinity index you should also have sort of an increase or sort of um, inequality or sort of the profit share in if you take sort of the income the source of function in sort of perspective but i mean what i was you know looking um in my sort of analysis of you know the the, the facts sort of for the, the style as for latin america at least for the decade, uh, you know, that was uh, considering, so the, the last decade, you see actually there was a slow increase, so actually a slow decrease over time of the profit share. And this also explained the differential between sort of the Passinetti, sort of the, the, you know, the standard Passinetti index version that they estimated versus the one corrected with sort of the, the, the rate of growth of the profit share. So that's explained why, you know, actually it was slightly above 
to zero. Um, so why is so why the profit share was declining, although you know interest rate was where they were increasing? So the answer is that you know most of the time in those uh, you know small open economies, um, uh, in a Tirolian fashion, I should say. So the really you know the profit share is really related to correlated to the terms of trade. Um, and uh, well, especially if you sort of do consider the sort of decomposition, and sort of bear in mind that also, you know, income, GDP, expenditure are not the same things. And then you sort of have this simple sort of decomposition of you know, sort of nominal income, which will be sort of made up of GDP, the sort of the, uh, the net factor payments of the rest of the world, the current transfer, and sort of this, 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 this factor, which is the term of trade sort of effects. Um, well, you see that actually, you know, in some of the economies, I mean, I also had the data for Latin America, but, you know, I mean, we just take for, you know, the, for, as an example, the case of Colombia, you get a lot of, you know, you get, you get a differential between sort of the GDP and, and which is mainly driven by this term of trade, the sort of effects. So for the case of, uh, you know, for the case of this decade that I was mentioning you, you have actually had a negative but for you know the, the 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 terms of trade as a as a share of uh, as a share of GDP, and uh, and it basically has the same shape of sort of the profit share, and uh, actually if uh, you, you do shop the model, so you know you also have the, you do shop the model with an increase of the terms of trade, you get an increase an immediate increase of the profit share. So and because basically you know the the rationale is very simple in this case. So most of sort of the revenues for the you know export exporters of you know commodities will go to the will go to the higher sort of income earners or you know from a functional you know perspective will be accrued to you know firms and uh, you know the sort of uh, you know rentiers basically. Well, heck, I mean it's even resource rent, so I mean it's more rentier than this uh, you know this uh, this revenues, and so you can see that actually you know. Um, and you may have, you may recall. I mean, this was in a, in a slide in our in the in the in the lecture that Esteban Perez gave us in back in 2018 at the oh, No, I, I I do remember because I have the slide, <laughs> so that's why I retained this you know this slide. And so you get you see that the evolution is really you know this, the evolution of the resource rents and in general you know and also the thermostatic effect is really you know it really follows the same uh, the same evolution of really or one could even say that could you release you know the the sort of the 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 profit share so and makes totally sense i mean at least for the cases of you know commodity exporters of the countries such as the latin american ones so i mean this adds a little bit more uh an additional layer to sort of the passivity sort of relationship and also actually explain why this is this apparent sort of confrontation i'm done <laughs>